Alrighty then. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla. So, just by looking in the comments on the last Beauty and the Beast tutorial, you guys all voted for Cogsworth. So we are going to draw our angsty little clock friend today. So let's go ahead and draw Cogsworth. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to draw our typical circle, but I'm going to round off the top just a little bit up here. Bring this down. Round that off down here. So we're making kind of an egg shape, but it's a little bit more of a rounder egg at the bottom. And it looks more like a, I want to say a squash. It looks like a squash or a pear. After this, what I'd like to do is I'm going to jump down below and I'm going to give him that eye line. But the key thing you want to do is just to kind of keep this inwards, going inwards right here, round this off. Bring this down, make sure you round this off nice and straight down here. And then round this off. So after, after we designate our eye guideline, what I'd like to do is go ahead. Even though he's a clock, he still has eyes and a nose and I'm just going to determine where his middle of his face is. So we see a little bit of a three quarters turn in this particular image. So the good thing about clock, cog, I, only, I always want to say Clogsworth, it's Cogsworth, like he's a horse or something. But the thing I want to do is I want to go right here where our two lines meet and I'm going to put that perfect circle. Now after this circle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up here and put an eye all the way up here and I'm just going to make an oval. So I make an oval over here and then I'm going to jump over here. A little bit of separation away from this eye. I'm going to start this oval over here. Bring it, we're going to actually bring it all the way down. Make sure we mirror this side. We're going to bring down the eyes all the way down to that eye line. So they are ovals, but we're kind of mimicking what we did with the shape of his face. They're ovals, but up at top. So after that, what I'd like to do, since we're laying out everything, let's go ahead and lay out his mouth. Alright, so starting up here, what you're going to do, you're going to give him a dimple right here, and then you're going to jump all the way over here and give him a dimple here as well. We're going to go ahead and connect that, bring it all the way down, bring it up, and attach the dimple. He reminds me a lot of the King of Hearts in Alice in Wonderland. So you're going to go ahead and connect those. And you see I'm making it just like a little bit squiggly. So this one goes up, goes down, and up. And then I'm going to jump down below right here. Round that off. And we're actually going to bring down his face just a little bit more wider little bit wider it's okay because what we're going to do is we need to give him his chin everything's always a guideline so I'm actually gonna jump down below give him a lip line and then underneath he has a little chin so we have that lip line that bottom lip line and then his chin and he has a tongue all the way up over here and it's just gonna go into the corner and you give that division of the tongue at the top and there's, there's his mouth. Up at his eyes, what you're going to do is you're just going to jump off to the side and we're going to give him eyelids. So I jump off to the side of this eye, round this down over here. After that, I'm going to jump up here, round this down. So I'm just giving him eyelids on top of the eyes. You're not going to actually make eyelids from his eyes. You're actually creating a whole different eyelid and you just want to line the top, bring it down, line the top and bring it down. After that, what you're going to do is you're just going to give him a thick eyelash line on top. He doesn't have like separated eyelashes. He just, just ha he just has that one thick eyelash there and one thick eyelash here. 
After that, you're going to jump inside of his eye, one pupil here, and then one pupil up in the down in the corner. And he doesn't really have shines to his eye. If you want to give him a little shine, you can. I'll give him a little shine. What you're going to do with the circle is like with the eyelids. So this is the side. I'm going to jump inside right here and we're going to pretend to give an eyelid to his nose. Really what we're doing is we're just making it look a little bit more three-dimensional. So before we draw the minute hand and the hour hand of his face, you're actually going to jump down here from the side and give him a little line here. And underneath you're going to give him a little bag under his eye here. And then you're going to jump over here and give him a little bag under his eye over here as well. We're going to do the minute hand first. You're going to go ahead, bring the minute hand past over here, past his smile line. So you have the minute hand and you're going to jump over here. Now you're going to do the hour hand. I'm going to bring it right here. And we're just going to leave it right there. And you're going to make the base of the minute hand, just make it a little bit more triangular and you're bringing it out, just making it fatter at the base. Same with this one. Bring this a little bit more pointier. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make a kite shape. So we're going to start with the hour hand. So I make a little bit of a triangle and make this pointy. So we just made a kite. And you can go ahead and color that in. And then you're going to jump over here. You're basically making an eight. So we just made an eight. Circle here and circle here. Looks a little bit like a key as well. And then you're going to jump down to this one and you're going to make a heart. And it's going to be an open heart. So I make one side right here at the base at the end of the minute hand. There it is. It's going to make a little triangle right here. Little triangle. And then jump all the way over to the other side. On the same level and you're going to make another little triangle. So after that, what you're going to do around his entire face, you're just going to line around this entire shape of his face a little bit more above it not too thick and if you want to you can go ahead and line the inside of the guidelines that you made for his face now what we're going to do next is you're going to go all the way to the top and you're going to make a little bit like a flower petal and then what you're going to do is you're going to jump off to the side, bring this down, way down, all the way over here. And you're actually going to circle inward like this and go right back up. And you're actually going to jump in so inside right here from this little swirly part. Bring this down, circle it around. You want to make sure you get to his face. And then I'm going to jump from my flower petal and I'm going to line, I'm going to mimic the line underneath that I just made on top. Mimic this down and into here. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to make a line here and that that will close off the t that top of his face. So from our flower petal, bring it down. We're actually going to go all the way down to here. You're going to make a cylinder. Bring it up. So from the top of right here, you're going to bring this downwards. circle in but you want to make this a little bit more rounded off so this is rounded off and this is rounded off like we did on this side you're gonna jump inside line it bring it down and 
I'm actually going to jump inside the cylinder we made and I'm going to make this little spiral like we made and I'm going to jump back up and I'm just going to wait bring this in just like this just make that thick and then what you're going to do is you're just going to circle off inside and this essentially going to lead from the top of the spiral this is going to lead down to here and into here and this goes up and bring this in just a little bit more and then what you're going to do is you're going to jump from right here and you're going to circle off just curve this inward. So what I want to do next is I'm going to jump down underneath his chin. We're going to make kind of like a clover it looks like, but it's actually like the napkin. It's like, you know, fancy material. But you're going to make one. I'm saying it's a clover, so you're going one, two, and three back up into his chin. One, two, three. Draw a circle right here. And then you're going to jump over here and make a circle right here. What we're going to do with this circle first is you're going to go ahead and we're actually going to jump inside the middle and make the circle. And you're going to jump over here, round this off just a bit, bring this off to the side, and then round back in. You're going to bring this up, circle, you're going to make that spiral inside the circle get rid of this and then what I'm going to do from down here from this side of the circle I'm going to bring this down I'm going to jump back up to the spiral bring this side down so you're going to bring it all the way down to here And then I'm going to jump back up to this part of this spot of this circle spiral. Kind of looks like a, sh a sushi roll. And then I'm going to jump down. And I'm going to get closer to over here. And as I get closer to where I started, I, I keep going inwards. But you want to make this nice and thick up here and round it downwards. And with this kind of a sushi roll, what you're going to do is you're going to chop off this side. So this is going to be your circle. And you're going to bring this over here. And you're going to bring this down to right here. Bring this in. And make that sushi roll again. That spiral. And then from right here, bring this down. And you're going to jump up and line that line you just made, bring it down. And then I'm going to jump inside right here, right underneath the spiral, jump off to the side, circle this inward, make sure it's nice and flowing with each other. And that's when I'm going to jump in here. And you're going to make a circle, kind of a rounded off triangle. Jump under here and make this triangle as well. It's like a rounded off triangle, so they should be on top of each other. Line this side of that triangle shape down here and do the exact same thing. Line it and you can get rid of these guidelines. You can actually circle the top of this one and leave that one. Circle right here. But they're his hands and they're coming from this one is belongs to this arm and this one belongs to this arm and they're like this. They're cupped. For his clover, after his clover, you're going to line it
after you line it, you're going to square off this side and the same over here, you're gonna go ahead and square off this side, bring it down. After you square this off, the lining, square it off, bring it down, it goes into his arm. This is just going to be hiding behind his arm. Jump off to this arm right here. Bring down his body. And then from this spot right here, where we're hiding behind his arm, I'm actually gonna draw through and bring down that side. And I'm actually at the bottom of my page because this picture reference only shows him from the waist up. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring down this side as well. And I drew it off my page. I'm gonna bring down this side underneath his arm. From underneath this lined part, what you're gonna do is you're just going to go ahead and bring down right here. And go ahead and give a circle. And I'm gonna draw through his hands. And it's skinny up top, but wide at the bottom. And there's his little pendulum inside of his chest. Underneath his hands, you're gonna jump down to the bottom, bring out this side, and then jump over here, round off this side, and connect. Round it down by connecting. One more line off to the side, right here, rid of this line and you're going to get rid of this line so one huge important thing that we forgot to put on Cogsworth is his eyebrows so all the way to the top right where it's meeting this part this wood part is meeting you're gonna make one eyebrow you see how I'm just curving it like this one there and then one over here. And you're gonna make them nice and thick. So I'm just making them wider here, and wider here. Well guys, there you go. There is how to draw Cogsworth from Disney's Beauty and the Beast. I really hope you guys will go and check out the new live action Beauty and the Beast that's released tomorrow. I get to see it tonight. I'm so excited. No spoilers if you have seen it. I We all know the story of Beauty and the Beast, but no spoilers if there's anything different. But yes, guys, I hope you'll at least draw one of these amazing timeless characters. And I really hope you all have a wonderful day. And next week, we'll have to move on to something else because this concludes our Beauty and the Beast Doodle series. And I hope you guys have a good day. Bye!